But let's come to West Africa, where we will uh, focus on a very, very important and brewing story. The Nigerian government has warned the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, against inciting people to violence over the outcome of the February 25, 2023 presidential elections. The warning was handed down by the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohammed, during an official engagement with some international media organizations on the just concluded 2023 polls in Washington, D.C. Now, during the interactions with the media organizations, Mohammed posited that it was wrong for Obi on one breath to seek redress in court over the outcome of the polls and in another breath inciting people to violence. Now, we have a clip of his exact words. Do take a look. Okay. As Obi and his vice, Dati Ahmed, cannot be threatening Nigerians that if the president elects Bola Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress, that's the APC, is sworn in on the 29th of May, it will be the end of democracy in Nigeria. Apparently, he sees it as a threat, and so does a lot of people. Now, this, according to him, is treason. Obi's statement is that of a desperate person. He's not the Democrat that he claims to be. A Democrat should not believe in democracy only when he wins the election. According to Lime Mohammed. Well, Lime Mohammed is Nigeria's Minister of Information and uh, Culture. Don't forget. Well, the, in the rather swift reaction, the presidential candidate, on the other hand, of the Labour Party, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, has reacted to the treason allegation levelled against him by the federal government through Lime Mohammed. And he said, uh, let's take a look at what he said. He said, in the past uh, few days, I have observed various campaigns of uh, Columnly directed at my person, with the latest being allegations attributed to the information minister, Lai Mohammed from Washington, D.C. I have never discussed or engaged anyone to undermine the Nigerian state. I have never sponsored or preached any action against the Nigerian state. Those initiating these actions have increasingly used their official positions and agents to make false allegations against me. Well, this conversation, uh, you need to know this, uh, has indeed gathered up some dust in the air and reactions and counter-reactions have come back and forth. Besides that, many have labelled it as a strong accusation, especially having done that in the international scene or within the international community. Joining us this morning is Executive Director, Centre for Journalism, Innovation and Development, uh, Dakar, Senegal, Dr. Toby Luatola, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Joe. Thank All you, right. Dr. Toby, for joining us. You're welcome. Thank All you very right. much. Now let's 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 go into the meat. You know, let's 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 delve in. Um, ever since the presidential elections and of course the uh, uh, governorship elections, uh, we've started to see a lot of back and forth in terms of conversations being made there seems to be no calm no peace and then as if it wasn't enough it was done here in nigeria we do have another uh, level to it it's now being done out of the shores of nigeria in the international community um, what comes to your mind when we uh, are being called nigerians outside of our very own country concerning uh, what we've seen portray especially yesterday Thank you very much for that question. I think first and foremost, we've got to recognize that democracy is about the people. And it's about, it's, it's um, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And the el elections are the way in which we, we the people, decide who will lead us. And when that is disputed, it's important that we go through proper channels to make sure that we get redress. But at the same time, it's important that we do not throw away the baby with the bathwater. It's important that we preserve democracy and our ability to um, continually work towards ruling ourselves and appointing people to, um, to direct our affairs. Now, I, will, I would be the first to say that these elections weren't perfect. And there were many things that 
were regrettable about the elections. So, um, so certainly there was the issue of um, results, um, miscommunication about the process of elections and the process of collation and what will happen after people vote at the polling units, where the results will be uploaded in real time or not. So there was a lot of miscommunication there um, in the run-up to the elections. But it is also true that, uh, that the, the reality is that the, what, the, what the law says is that INEC can decide how they will call it. But what the, what, the, what the guidelines then say that they will transmit electronically, but what they really were obliged to do was to upload um, the PDF of the results at the polling unit level on the, on the IREV, and then collate manually like they've always done. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Now, were there other types of irregularities in different parts of the country? That is true. There were irregularities in River State as there were in Imo State, but as there were in Enugu or Anambra or even Lagos State or, or Kaduna. So there were irregularities everywhere. The important message here is that, number one, was this election significantly worse than any of the elections we've had in the past? And my argument will be that on almost all um, objective basis, it wasn't. On all objective basis, it was perhaps better an election than what we have usually had because we had the introduction of the beavers, which reduced the risk of overvoting. But then there were other things that we typically have. Security um, was bad, but it was better than we typically would have. Uh, so on on objective basis, this election wasn't bad. So we've got to be careful when, because both sides have are to blame to some degree. We've got to be careful when um, the opposition, because they don't like the results of the election, we've got to be careful when we stir up the polity um, to points of, um, of to, and we heat up the polity um, to points of insurrection. We've got to be careful about that, and it's a fine line. It's important to seek redress for irregularities. It's important to make sure that we, um, we, we, there's accountability for the people, um, including INEC officials and security officials, who either connived with, um, with thugs to, to suppress votes and use ethnic bigotry and do all, all sorts of um, um, malfeasances. It's important to hold, to hold those people accountable, and it's important that there be severe consequences. But at the same time, we've got to remember that first of all, we've got to remember that democracy is what's important is what's is what's most important. Right. And when people start to make claims like you know an interim president and democracy will, will break. I think it's it's a terrible thing. I right. also think Dr. that it's not a good thing that our elections always go to court. Okay. Dr. Toby, thank you for that balance. I could see that you tried to create a balance between both sides of what you were saying. And still talking about democracy and accountability. I would like for us to take a look at uh, the statement made by the Minister of Information and Culture. That's Lai Mohammed. Now, I wouldn't quote, but I'll paraphrase. He says that Peter Obi is not exactly a Democrat. I mean, if he is a Democrat like he claims, a Democrat will not only see democracy when he wins. And I would like for us to, um, to get your opinion on that, because if we're talking about democracy, you said that democracy, and I mean, that's according to the definition, is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And in the case where what the people want is not what the people are seeing, then isn't it okay to say that it's it, it's time to fight for their democracy? So I'm just trying. I mean, I like that you started off creating balance. I want us to also create balance with that statement that he made about, you know, uh, the opposition not being a Democrat. What do you think about that? I think that's so true. I think that um, every party will try to... Um, I think we have to avoid falling in in the ditch on either side of the of the coin or of the road, right? So every party will try to paint an extreme of their of the opponent, so that we can sort of try to find the middle ground. So I think it's untrue that the um, um, that Peter B is not being a Democrat. I think it's a bit extreme. I do think, however, 
that some of the rhetoric in the media space, particularly on social media, not just in the aftermath of the election, but even, do, in, in, but even before the election, has been quite um, what you might call fascist, in the sense that this election has been cast in such very stark cosmic good and evil um, terms that the obedient tend to see themselves as the good in this election. And a lot of obedience adopt a stance that it's our way or the highway and that regardless of the means good must prevail and and and, and it, it's a and it's a religious thing it's a it, it goes from you know this idea of people believing so strongly in something and be, being willing to sacrifice i'm an i'm a lame to 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 make that thing come through come true and but but there's a risk to that there's a risk to that and the risk is that people then uh, it's the same reason why there have been wars and and crusades across history it's once you can make people believe so passionately in a movement or in in something to the point where they are willing to kill and be killed um then you 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 lay the groundwork for um, a possible insurrection and the groundwork for a possible for possible anarchy, and that's the balance that Peter Obi and his supporters really need to understand. That even though we we I firmly believe that is a Democrat, I think that there there are elements within that movement that are willing to charge up the polity um, and burn the whole place down. And there are people who have said that. And we will burn the old place down if it doesn't go our way. It's a, it is true that we must seek redress and we must do whatever we can within our power to seek redress through the legal means. And even when the legal means um, fails and we see that to be corrupted in certain ways, we've got to uh, make sure we gather evidence and we make that, we, we speak the truth very, very objectively. But we've also got to be careful All right, so because... Finally. All right, Mr. Toby, um, uh, just caught in from the Nation newspaper, I think one of the aspects that we can also look at is um, the point that uh, Lai Mohammed, that's uh, the minister, uh, did make. Um, say, he did, said, uh, he did say uh, that um, it was wrong for will be in one breath uh, to seek redress in court. Um, it was wrong for him to seek redress in court over the outcome of the polls. Well, I think uh, I want to ask: What are the courts meant for? Are the courts meant to seek redress, or uh, they're just meant uh, not to be uh, used, if at all? And we've seen that there will be a court case. We talked about that yesterday, and the likes. Well, I'd like you to touch on that. If it was wrong, if it was wrong from your perspective, that's no, that's wrong. that's that's no, that's that's not true. I mean, it's uh, the where do you then seek redress? You have to seek redress in court, and you have to seek regret redress. And, and also people saying that, you know, it was wrong for, um, for the um, opposition to um, seek redress even while coalition was happening was wrong. Um, they have a right to seek redress while coalition is happening, especially when in cases where there were egregious cases of suppression and um, the coalition officer could have asked for a revolt in certain parts of the country. Um, so, so yes, the, at every step of the, of the way, the opposition have a right to seek redress right. and we can't just be a winner take all democracy all right let's take a look at a tweet um, uh, posted up uh, by the former uh, minister of education uh, who has been talking tough as well concerning this situation well this is our reaction dr obias equesity she says it is the height of sophistry thoughtless talk and abuse of power for the minister of information and culture uh, to throw accusation of treason on political opponents who have taken the right judicial processes in contesting the result of an election. And she goes there to say, uh, stop it. Uh, how do you react uh, to that story and uh, most importantly to that tweet? I beg your pardon. I think there are words that we use that tend to be very uh, contentious. The word treason is, is, is a little too, going a little too far. It's a little too... Um, um, uh, 
it's 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 combustible that word so when you bring out the word treason that's like you know saying that someone committed a coup and 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 that and that's a capital offense so so we've got to be careful the words that we use i think Lai Mohammed went too far in using that word treason mm. okay and um uh, Dr. Toby, I would like for us to also talk about the interim government. Now, it's obvious this is not the NS Shonekon or the Sani Abacha era. So a lot of people are asking why exactly people need an interim government. I mean, they would say that it's as easy as allowing the president-elect, that's Bola Tinubu, to just stay in power. And then if at all uh, it is, you know, contested in court and they find that he isn't the rightful person to be in power, then he steps down. So what exactly is the tussle in that area? I think so Nigeria is not is yet to experience a democratically elected president be removed um, at the court we're yet to experience that we were close in 2007 um, but it did not happen um, because the courts ruled in, in the direction of national um, national stability even though there was a clear um, there were clear you know Every, there was clear evidence of lots of lots of um, um, election malfeasance. Mal, mal See, what I we've seen governors lose their seats, and we've had at least seven of those happen. Um, is it seven or, or ten? I, 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 the number the number skips me. Twenty eight. Eight of them happen. So we can expect that we can expect that. Nigeria's democracy is mature enough to handle it. So I don't see, so historically what has always happened and what the law says is that the president-elect who's returned by INEC gets sworn in. If the courts overturn the, the, the election, then, then uh, so be it. We, we, we have to have faith that our democracy can handle that as well. Um, I know that there are certain people who believe that, oh, was to give someone like Bola Tinubu power, um, there's no taking it back, you know, <laughs> and that uh, it, will, it will fight tooth and nail to keep it. But I think that's why we have different actors in our democracy, and this is where other institutions in our democracy have to really stand up. We saw what happened in the US when Donald Trump tried to use um, his inc power of incumbency to stay in power indefinitely and to, to discredit the election. And what happened was that the military came out and said, no, you can't do that. Um, we are an independent institution and we will uphold democracy. Whatever you do will uphold democracy and we'll kick you out. So this is where, you know, the institutions of government have to really stand up. If the courts say something, the executive needs to obey the courts. And, um, and if the legislature has legislated something, we all have, this is, this is really a balance of power thing. And when we have a case where the executive is all powerful, our democracy is at risk. I want to say thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Uh, Toby, uh, all the way from the Federal Capital Territory, Dr. Toby Uluwatola. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I although, it. I, although I would have loved to ask about Maki Sal and uh, your thoughts about that, but I think I'll leave that for next time, okay? <laughs> no, no worries. Thank you so much.